Hello, this is the math dog here. This video is on the circumference and area of a circle. Before tackling this video, you should have watched my video on the area and perimeter of parallelograms. I'm classifying this as grade seven, but actually could be grade six. Common Core probably would put it at grade seven. But if you can, I'd put it in in grade six. This video is not to be shared or reproduced without the written consent of myself, the math dog. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about parts of a circle. So a circle consists, we talk about the center of a circle, and then we talk about the distance from the center to a point on the circle. That is called a radius. A line segment that goes through the center and intersects points, two points on the circle is called a diameter. It's also called a chord of the circle that happens to go all the way through the circle and through the center. The circumference of the circle is, again, how far it is around the circle, one complete revolution, or if, you, if it was a wheel, how far does it go when you roll it one time? That is the circumference, okay? So then the diameter is all the way across the circle through the center, and the radius is from the center to a point on the circle. So before we do this, let's talk about names for the circle. So circles, we start with naming the center. So some names for this circle shown would be circle OA. Sometimes you see this, a circle with a dot in it, circle OA. Then we have circle OP is another name for it. So you name it using a radius. On the circle, that could be circle OP. And then we could talk about circle um, OB as well. They all mean the same thing, just the same circle. Okay, so notice that this would be OA is also a radius of the circle. So notice that two times radius, I'm calling it R, is equal to a diameter. And then notice that one half of a diameter is equal to a radius. One half D is R. Okay. So again, here is a circle. I haven't named it here. Let's let's actually name this circle. Let's call that O. Let's call this P. Let's call this Q. So some names for a circle would be circle OP also call it circle OQ so radii is the plural of radius so the radii we could call would be seg uh, segment OP and segment OQ those are both radii in a diameter of this circle is PQ or QP. Remember, you could name either way because segment PQ and QP are the same thing because they're line segments. You just need to name the two endpoints. So where does this circum this, um, this number pi come from? Well, what I've shown here is a 20 gon, which is a polygon with 20 sides this is actually called a regular 20 gon because all the sides are the same length all these line segments are the same all 20 of them are congruent to each other and these interior angles here are all congruent that's what makes a regular 20 gon okay so the Greek Archimedes came up with the best estimate of time for this number pi by finding the perimeter of a 96 gon. So actually, I believe he started with a uh, triangle. Then if you take six equilateral triangles, that is triangles with the same, um, all the sides are equal, you can take six of them, you can make a hexagon. And then he kept splitting it up until he got 96 pieces. And notice that as you increase the number of sides, your figure starts looking more and more like a true circle. So that's 
how he came up with an estimate for this number pi, which turns out to be the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. So this number pi, which is irrational, and if you remember, irrational numbers mean numbers that cannot be written as proper fractions. So pi is equal to circumference, that is one time around a circle divided by its diameter. Okay, if you cross multiply, you get c equals pi times d. And since the diameter, a diameter, let's draw in the diameter here. Let's draw it in, uh, let's put a dash line for diameter, a dotted line. Um, let's use um, purple. So there's a diameter of this estimated circle. It's not actually a circle here. This is a 20 gon, but imagine it's pretty close to a circle. So again, one diameter is equal to two radii. So since a two, di two radii equals a diameter, two rate times radius equals diameter, we can substitute for D two R so we have two formulas for circumference. One is C equals pi D. The other one is going to be 2 pi R. Because you can rearrange when you multiply. It doesn't matter the order that you multiply. And often we will use 3.14 to approximate pi in our exercises here in our examples. So now we're going to talk about how to derive the formula for area of a circle. And recall that circumference is pi, 2 pi r and d is equal to 2 r. So what I've done here is I have a circle and I've chopped it up into eight equal pieces. And I've shown that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange these pieces like so. So I'll start, so I'll start here. What I'll do is I will alternate them up and down like this. I'm just going to put them all together as I'm doing here, alternating up and down. See if I can uh, run out of room here. Let's see if I can highlight this whole thing here and move this to here. All right, and then we have one more piece, number eight. All right, so if you look at this figure, it's very close to a parallelogram. Now, it's got humpy, these aren't actually sides, but they're close to a line segment. And the thing is, if we divided this, say, into a million parts, this would look very much like a line segment. You'd literally have to put it under a microscope to, to see that there's actually humps. So, remember, area of parallelogram is the base times the height, this would be the height h, this would be the base b, remember that has to intersect the ground at a right angle. So what I'm going to do here is with my, I know this is the area of a circle, so I'm going to draw an altitude in, and notice that this would be right here. The 
that is going to be very close to a height. Obviously, it's maybe not exactly. It's not exactly. But this, this is actually, I could also put it right here. This is actually the radius of the circle. Okay. So I'm imagining the ground here. So those are right angles. This is my radius R of the circle. So up here again, this would be a radius. So that's what I'm representing right here. Now, what is this? Okay, well, this, 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 and this, plus this, 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 and this make the circumference of our circle. So down here, this base of this parallel, this approximate parallelogram has to be half a circumference because this, 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 plus this, 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 this make a circumference. So this is approximately right here, half a circumference. Okay. But a circumference is equal to 2 pi r, so we could rewrite this as 1 half, substituting 2 pi r in for c, we get this. And then half of 2 is 1, so this ends up being pi r. Well, if this is my, right here, this is my approximate parallelogram, this is my base, and this is my height, the area of this parallelogram is going to be base, which, I'm rep which is pi r, times the height, which is r, which gives me pi r squared. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now if you protest, well that's not really a parallelogram, think of it this way. So I only took eight pieces because it gets hard to demonstrate this, but what if I had a million pieces? If I had a million pieces, the same process would work and now my humps would appear as line segments. And now let's imagine I took a billion pieces, it'd even be closer to a true line segment, a trillion pieces, etc. So theoretically, as I move the number of sides to infinity, this in fact approaches what a true parallelogram is, and the area of parallelogram is base times height. Okay, so this is generally the area of formula we use. But remember that D is 2R, or R, so we have diameter D is 2R. So if I solve, so I'm sorry, not 2 pi r, 2 r. Two, rad, 2 times radius is diameter. So solving this for radius, so let's rearrange this. We have 2 r equals d. Solving for radius, if I divide both sides by 2, I get r equals d over 2. So I could make a substitution for the area of a circle with an alter giving an alternative formula using diameter instead of radius, what I do is I replace r here with d over 2, but that has to be to the second power, so I'm replacing r with d over 2. Well, d, o d squared is d to the second is d squared, so you have to take both the d and the 2 to the second power. Well, 2 squared is 4. So our alternative formula ends up being pi times d squared over 4. This is also the area of a circle. We don't use it probably as much as the other one, but it is totally legit. So those are two formulas for the area of a circle. I just use this one and what I do, I mean I guess I maybe occasionally have used this one, but what I do is if I have a diameter I just divide it 
by 2 before I enter it into the circle formula right here. So let's do some examples. So suppose um, we want to, well, we want to find the area in circumference of a circle. Let's do circumference first. We're going to use 3.14 to approximate pi. Pi is an irrational number again. It's about 3.14. 15927 and it it's irrational irrational numbers turns out there's no pattern in in these digits as they go on and on and on there's no repetition whatsoever that's what makes a irrational number you can different from a repeating decimal repeating decimal like 1.575757 the 5 and 7 repeat this is a rational number it actually can be written as a fraction not going to go into how you do that here but pi is irrational but we're going to use an approximation to approx to get a estimate for pi here so to find the circumference here I'm going to use 2 pi r as my formula so that's going to be 2 times I'm going to use I'm going to put this is I'll put a little squiggly here that means approximately equal to 3.14 times radius because the formula is c equals 2 pi r, radius is 4 inches. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, well, 2 times 4 is 8, so that's 8 times 3.14. Do the multiplication. Remember, when you multiply, you line up the rightmost digits, not the decimal points. So 3.14 times 8, 4 times 8 is 32, carry a 3, 1 times 8 is 8, plus 3 is 11, carry a 1, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So I get 25.12. Um, inches is the circumference of the circle. Now the area is pi times r squared. Well, r here is 4 inches, so that's to be pi times 4 inches squared. Well, inches times inches is inches squared. 4 to the second is not 8. It means 4 times 4 is 16. So I have pi times 16 inches squared, and usually we put the 16 before the pi, so that's 16 pi inches squared. But if we want to get an approximation, we're going to change pi. We're going to say this is approximately equal to 16 times 3.14 inches squared. So 3.14 times 16, again, you line up the rightmost digits when you multiply, not the decimal points. 4 times 6 is 24, carry a 2. 1 times 6 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 3 times 6 is 18, that's row 1. Now we have to multiply everything by 1, so I had a placeholder 0. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. So I have 4, that's 12, carry a 1, that's 10, carry a 1, that's 5. Move dust point two places from the right, so that's 50.24 inches squared is the area approximately. So another example, find the area in circumference of circle. So what I'm going to do is, I gave you a diameter here, I'm going to use a radius in my formula, so I'm going to call that 6 feet. So circumference is 2 pi r, so this is 2 approximately equal to 2 times 3.14 times radius, which is 6. So 2 times 6 is 12, so I've got 12 times 3.14, and that's going to be feet when I'm done. So I've got 3.14 times 12. Again, when I multiply, I like to, you don't have to, but I think it's easier to put the number with the most digits on top. You can do it the other way, but I like to do it this way. So again, I'm not lining up the dust points. There actually is a dust point of 12. I'm lining up the rightmost digits. So 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2, it's 3 times 2 is 6. Add a placeholder 0, now everything you multiply by 1. 4 times 1 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 1 is 3. Add it up, 8, 6, 7, 3. Move dust point 2 places to the left, so I get 37.68 inches as my circumference of that circle. The area is pi times radius squared. So that's pi times 36. And let's just go back to this other one for a moment. 
This is the exact area of that circle, and I wrote it, then I approximated it. So the exact area uses pi in it. This is the estimated area where I change pi to 3.14. Okay, so in this problem, the exact area is 36 pi, and that's going to be feet squared. Well, that's approximately equal to, if we wanted to use an approximation, decimal approximation for pi of 3.14, that's going to be 36 times 3.14 feet squared. So 3.14 times 36, again, you line up when you multiply, you do not line decimal points up, you line the rightmost digits. So I have 3.14 times 36, 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2, 1 times 6 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 3 times 6 is 18. Now I multiply everything by 3, I put a placeholder 0 here, 4 times 3 is 12, carry a 1, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. Add these up now, that's 4, 10, carry a 1, 8 and 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, carry a 1, that's 1 plus 1 plus 9 is 11. Move the dust point now two places to the left from the right, so it's 113.04 feet squared or square feet. Okay, so before I go on to this practice or have you do these practices, let's go back here a second. So I was talking about exact answers. I mentioned that for the areas, but I did not mention that for the circumference. So the, this is the approximate circumference of the first circle here. The precise circumference here would have been two pi times four, which is going to be eight pi inches which was, a, this should have been actually 25.12 as my estimate. So let's actually fix that, just notice that. It should be 25.12 as the estimate of the circumference, but the actual precise circumference using pi, which is an irrational number, is eight pi. So then in the other example here, we came up with an estimate of 37.68 inches the precise circumference of circles will be 2 pi times 6 inches, which is 12 pi inches. So the precise exact circumference is 12 pi, and we estimated it using 37.68 inches. Why might you want to do the estimate? Because like if you have a tape measure or a ruler or something, you're not going to use 12 pi to measure it out. You're going to have to use an estimate like 37.68. All right, so now I'll stop the video and I want you to do these two questions. Find the area and circumference of both. Find the exact and the um, approximate for both area and circumference. So we'll use 3.14 to approximate pi. So stop the video and then when you're done, turn it back on and we'll check your work you can see how it compares to what I'm gonna do all right so the first one here we have 5.14 feet I'm sorry we have 5.1 feet is our radius this is a radius it's half a diameter so we again the circumference of circle is 2 pi r so in this case the exact circumference is 2 times pi times 5.1 feet. Well, 5.1 times two is like 51 times two, which is 102, we move decimal point. That's 10.2 times pi feet. So using 3.14 as our approximation, so that we take 10.2 times 3.14, this will be feet. So over here, let's do that multiplication. So we got three digits top and bottom it doesn't really matter which one you put on top or bottom here for the multiplication I'm gonna do it this way so again remember when you multiply you line up the rightmost digits not the decimal points my decimal points are not lined up and they shouldn't be here I line up the four and the two so four times two is eight one times two is two three times two is six 
add a placeholder zero. Now I'm multiply everything by zero. Well, four times zero is zero. One times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. Now I'm multiply everything by one, so I need to add two placeholder zeros. Four times one, drop it straight down as four. One times one is one. Three times one is three. So now add everything up, that's eight. Two, that's 10, carry a one, that's two. Three, so I have one, two, three places to move it to the left, so I get about 32.028 feet. Now, reality is my measure is only to the nearest tenth, so if we were talking about how to do a better estimate or a more accurate estimate, we'd drop some digits, but right now I'm just going to leave it as 32.028 feet, which is about, we'll say 32 feet. 32.0 feet is an estimate of the circumference. Now, the area is pi r squared, so that's going to be a equals pi times 5.1 quantity squared. That's going to be feet, so it's going to be feet squared. So here I'm going to take 5.1 times 5.1, lining up the rightmost digits. So that's 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. A placeholder 0, add that. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So add it up, that's 1. 10, carry a 1. 6, 2. So that's about 26 point, well it's 26.01 pi, and that's gonna be square feet. That's the exact area. Now, I'm kinda of running out of space here. I'm gonna take 26.01 times 3.14. So I'm gonna do it down here, 26.01 times 3.14. So again, I said I like to put the digit, the number with the most digits on top when I multiply. Line up the rightmost digits. One times four is four. Zero times four is zero. Six times four is 24. Carry a two. Two times four is eight. Plus two is 10. Second row, I first add a placeholder zero. One every, multiplying everything by one now. One times one is one. Zero times one is zero. Six times one, six times one is six. Two times one is two. Now I'm going to multiply everything by 3, add 2 placeholder zeros. 1 times 3 is 3, 0 times 3 is 0, 6 times 3 is 18, carry a 1, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So now I have 4, 1, 7, 6, 1, 2, and 8 is 11, carry a 1, that's 8. Move dust point 4 places to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. I get 81.6714. So the area is approximately, I'm running out of room here again. Let's just call it uh, about, it's about 81.7 square feet. Okay. Um, that's, I mean, it's, so I, round, I rounded this to the tenth digit here. I'm not going to talk about rounding in this video right now. So the second example, again, I have a diameter. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take half the diameter. Well, half of 18.1 is going to be, well, if you want to know, if you don't know what to do, you could take half 18.1. You could either divide 2 and 18.1 or multiply 0.5 times 18.1. I'm going to divide 2 and 18.1 like this. So bring the decimal point straight up there. 2 goes 18 9 times. 9 times 2 is 18. That's 0. Bring down to 1. 2 doesn't go into 1. goes in 0 times. 0 times 2 is 0. Keep going. Now you add a 0. Bring it down. 2 goes into 10 5 times. So the radius is going to be 9.05 feet. Okay, so now the circumference I'm using 2 pi r. Well, the interesting thing is since we gave the diameter, actually, kind of that was unnecessary work if you notice here because I'm going to have to multiply radius by 2 again anyway, so I may as well just use uh, the 8 pi times diameter formula for circumference, would have made things a lot easier. So that's going to be pi times 18.1, which 
which is 18.1 pi feet. That's the exact circumference. So now let's uh, estimate that using 3.14. So that's about 18.1 times 3.14 feet. So let's do that over here, 18.1 times 3.14. Again, you're lining up the rightmost digits, not the decimal points when you multiply. One times four is four, eight times four is 32, carry a three, one times four is four, plus three is seven. Add a placeholder zero, now I multiply everything by one. One times one is one, eight times one is eight, one times one is one. Now add two placeholder zeros, I'm multiplying everything by three. One, by th one times three is three. 8 times 3 is 24, carry a 2, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Add everything up now, that's 4, 3, 7, 8 is 15, plus 3 is 18, carry a 1, 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6, bring down the 5. I have three places behind a dust point, so 56.834 feet, so I'm going to call this about 56.8 feet, just getting rid of these last couple digits there. So that's an estimate for my circumference. Okay, now area is pi r squared, and I'm gonna use the radius here, 9.05. So I have pi times 9.05 squared, and that's gonna be square feet. So now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, first of all, multiply 9.05 times itself. So we have, Again, we line up the rightmost digits. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry to 2. 0 times 5 is 0. Plus 2 is 2. 9 times 5 is 45. Add a placeholder 0. Now you're multiplying everything by 0. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0 here. Now add two zeros for placeholders. Now I multiply everything by 9. 5 times 9 is 45. Carry a 4. 0 times 9, zero times nine is 0. Plus 4 is 4. Okay. Then 9 times 9 is 81. So that's 5 plus 0, that's a 0 there. That's 5, 2, 10, carry a 1. 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9. Bring down the 1 and the 8. I have four places behind this point, so that's 81.9025. Okay, so I have now pi times 81.9025. I'll write it as this. That's my exact area. Now that's approximately, so I'm gonna use 3.14. Now I'm gonna actually do this whole messy multiplication here just to demonstrate. So that's my estimate. So 81.9025 times 3.14. 0.14. I've got, I'm going to have three rows of things multiplied here, so we've got a little monster here, but I'm going to do it. So 5 times 4 is 20, carry a 2, eight, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10, carry a 1, 0 times 4 is 0, plus 1 is 1, 9 times 4 is 36, carry a 3, 1 times 4 is 4 plus 3 is 7, and 8 times 4 is 32. So now I add a placeholder 0. Now I multiply everything by 1. So that's just going to be these digits 5, 2, 0, 9, 1, 8. So now I add two placeholder zeros. I multiply everything by 3. So 5 times 3 is 15, carry a 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 0 times 3 is 0. 9 times 3 is 27, carry a 2. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. And 8 times 3 is 24. So we've got a bunch going on here. I'm going to actually draw columns in this one. Sometimes that's helpful so you make sure everything's lined up properly. Okay, so I have 0, 5, that's 8 here, that's 13 here, carry a 1, that's 16 and 1 is 17, carry a 1, 
That's 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 7, that's 11. 3 and 8 is 11, carry a 1. 3 plus 8 is 11, plus 1 is 12, plus 5 is 17, carry a 1. And that's going to be 5 and 2. So I have now 6 places behind a dust point. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I get 257. And 257, I'm going to round that to right here. That's a uh, 257, put the decimal right there. I'm gonna call that a two because that's a seven behind. So it's about 257.2 square feet. Okay. So our exact area was this. Our estimate, notice that's about 82, 82 times three. Again, you could have just ballparked it. I actually took the time to multiply it out. But that's going to be 246. We got 257 as our as a better estimate. And this concludes the video.